Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel. And today's video is an in-depth look to 1320 Challenge. I know, I've made a lot of videos about 1320 Challenge lately. Can you blame me? We are all excited that Espionage has brought this game back. And that we have it here to play. So, I wanted to do an in-depth explanation of the game. Starting right with just how to play the game. How to make an account and something a little bit longer than just here's how to download the game here's how to make an account have fun because today's games don't have tutorials in them that explain how to play and this and that so obviously i want to sit here and actually explain to you guys the ins and outs of 1320 challenge for those who never played it in the past so if you want to play 1320 challenge you simply just Go to our website, 1320challenge.com. It has a basic layout on it right now, just so you can easily, you know, navigate it and get a download for it. You just simply click either the Google Drive link, the Terabox link, or the direct link. Recommend one of these two because my web host sucks. After that, once you download it, you will get, I have a lot of files in here, but you will get three files. You will get this SA Flash Player, this 1320 Challenge Host Editor, and the 152S.SWF. You can ignore this other stuff. This is like beta testing stuff that I've made for myself for trying different things. But don't worry about that for now. Before you can play the game, you need to run this host editor file. You simply right click it and click run as admin. Hit Y on your keyboard, then hit enter and this will edit your host file to point the game back to Espionage's server. Very simple. Once you are finished with that, you want to run the game, obviously. So, running the game is as simple as taking the 152.swf and dragging it on top of the saflashplayer.exe. Or, you can just open this up and drag it into the window, and it'll also work that way. Now, you, if you've never played before, obviously you need to make an account. So, give me one second, I'm going to switch so the game is bigger. All right, there we go. So now, obviously, you want to make an account. So if you want to make an account, you go in, select the little helmet on the left-hand side, click Details, click Select This Vehicle, click OK, click OK. Nothing loads there at the moment. Don't worry about it. And then you just make your spare account here, or make your account. Uh, use whatever username, obviously, you want. If you are a member on the Discord, um there is the option to change and give yourself a nickname on the discord what's very helpful we've realized already is if your username in the game is the same as on your discord so that just lets everybody know who's who in the game versus on the discord when we're chatting but you simply go through all done and then from there when you click create account it's going to ask you to approve your account just put one two three four five six in the text box click done and you're good from there, close the game. You want to close the game after creating your account because there are two bugs with the game right now. Um, well, one main bug. If you try to go in and buy other cars, the cars don't load in the showroom. You only see the Civic as if you're still creating an account. It's a bug. We'll fix it eventually. We just, you know, it's one of those bugs that's not really that important right now, especially because in the future, you're probably going to have to close the game and reopen it to activate your account anyway in some way or something like that. But after that, you can log into your account. It'll load all your stuff. And now you see the main screen. Ta-da! You're into 1320 Challenge. This is just the main like little advertisement window version number telling you if you're a member or not, 1320 challenge. Um, these little things are for different leaderboard types. There's wins and losses, which mine is terrible. I don't know where mine is in here, but I'm like fitty fitty. It's really bad. Oh, somebody made a day. Okay. I'm in here somewhere. It doesn't matter where I, oh, there I am, 109 losses and 100. 109 wins and 110 losses. I suck. Anyway, then there's top teams. Uh, teams are not completed yet, so I don't think you can race, uh, team race and stuff like that yet, so this isn't really that important. 
Then there's obviously fastest cars, which is um, almost always going to be the funny car, at least right now, just because it is the fastest car if you look at overall. But you can select specific cars and see what their fastest times are. It just takes a second to load sometimes. So, Or if that car has never been ran, I think it doesn't load anything. I don't remember. Anyway, that's not important. So next up, obviously, you have your cars. This is your garage. You go in, you can select. If you have multiple cars, you just click this to select it to be the main car you use for racing when you're sending people races. My favorite car to use right now is obviously I want to get to the top of the leaderboard. I've been using the Nitto 1320 Funny Car. But everybody starts out with a Civic. I sold my Civic. I didn't want it. So that's that. Now if you click Vehicle Setup, you can see all of your stuff. There is modifications, which on this car there's only the Magic Gearbox available because there's no reason to make it any faster. There's the tuning and dyno. You can click run dyno and see the horsepower figure for the vehicle. You can modify your gear ratios. You go into the paint shop. This car, I don't believe you can paint. No, you can't paint this at all. But normally you can. You can also do a number on the side of the vehicle. Click if it has a drop shadow. You can do different textures and stuff. And then there's your, there is your maintenance. You can do different types of oil. You can change your oil. Uh, at the moment, I don't think the oil matters, but in the long run, you will see uh, the $100 oil slows down engine damage and engine wear compared to the $50 oil. From there, you can also see engine damage. Obviously, I had 4 HP lost, and sometimes you will see, um, if you have nitrous on your vehicle, you will see the little nitrous meter right here that shows how much NOS you have left. And you can just click uh, fill bottle and it fills it up. So, obviously, maybe you want more cars. As you can see, I actually got that bug <laughs> because I was in the uh, create account. So, that's the bug I was talking about. Let me relaunch the game real quick. There we go. So, now I'm in the car showroom where you can see every car av available in the game. Like I said, everybody starts out with the Honda Civic, which is... There it is. Right there. Everybody starts out with the Honda Civic, but there are different vehicles, obviously, that you can go in and race. You can go in, you can buy a Dodge Charger, you can go in and get the Dodge Ram, you can get the TFD. Uh, there's a million and a half different cars in here, obviously, that anybody can go in, build it up, and race. I really want to make a bracket car out of one of these. We'll get into what bracket racing is in a little bit, but... As you can see, that's all the cars. So, if you have a little flashing light down here, that means you have an incoming race. If you want to race your incoming race, you just select which one. Uh, make sure my sound is off. And then you just go in and race. Now, you do have to do what's called staging your vehicle. Staging your vehicle is lining it up in this little green section. Clutch, harsh, uh, will get less wheel spin. Medium, a chance at wheel spin on high horsepower cars. And soft, I pretty much always get wheel spin. I don't exactly understand how the clutch works or what it does. I just know it's there. Obviously, these are your gears to know what gear you're in. This is the brake pedal, and this is the throttle. So, we're going to stage. Now, there are... Uh, different settings and like the graphic controller you can turn sound on and off the really highly competitive racers turn off everything and claim that makes them faster don't know if that's true i don't have enough data on it to actually give a data set and say if that's true i would think it wouldn't matter because you know it's 2022 and this is an adobe flash game there's no way anybody's computer in 2022 is lagging on this game just because there is like a crowd in the background <laughs> but anyway so i'm going to stage i'm going to finish you can see your light bulbs here i am obviously pre-staged because i'm in the yellow i just like to kind of bounce it up kind of like a bump box sort of thing and then you just shift using your up arrow 
there is no rev launching in 1320 challenge. So what I mean by rev launching is there is a computer challenge. I'll go over this in a second. Rev launching is basically exactly as it sounds. You sit there and you kind of rev your car at like 2000 RPMs and then you take off. But that's going to cause wheel spin in 1320 challenge. Obviously, if you have tire grip, that's better. Ooh, I'm missing horsepower. Wow, I really lost a lot of oil life. Anyway, obviously, you if you're spinning your tires, you're losing. That's just the grand scheme of things because you're not getting your power to the ground. So the best way to race in 1320 Challenge, in my opinion, and I'll go over this AI race thing here in a minute, best way to race, in my opinion, is just hold your left click down on the green uh, throttle button and then just scroll it like slightly below it so you don't accidentally rev. Because no matter what, that's going to cause wheel spin unless you have literally like 1,000% tire grip. I cannot, I have not yet figured out a way in this game to get a way to rev your car because it just wasn't a thing. So, if you want to uh, launch your car, the best way to go about it is wait until the final yellow light is lit or just beforehand, shift into first and then just slam it up. Now, obviously, I'm not staged yet. It's not an actual race, so <laughs> whatever. But let's say you want to make some money once the game is actually launched and you don't start your account with 30 billion freaking dollars. You can race AI opponents in this game. There's a cup tournament and a single race. There is a bug at the moment with the AI, which is why it's set up the way it is. But this is going to be a good example of what bracket racing is. So when you are racing the AI in this game, you are running a bracket race. Some people set up specific cars for bracket racing to make them far more accurate because it's a lot easier to run an accurate bracket race with your car with less shifting. The less shifts you do, the more likely your car is to be consistent because there's not that chance of you shifting at 6,900 versus 7,100. That could be as much as a hundredth of a second and that could cause you to break out. So what is bracket racing? Bracket racing is when you take your vehicle and you have to kind of guess what your ET is going to be. So as you just saw, I ran a 4.24 uh, for this vehicle. This is not your standard bracket car. Your normal bracket car is going to be like an 8.90 um, or something like that. Whatever your consistent time is, you want to put your dial in a little bit below it. So if I'm running, you know, on average ET 13.15, I might want to put in a bracket time of 13.12 just in case I run a little bit faster and have a better time in my car with just better shifting. You never know what's going to happen. But with a bracket race, I usually run 14 or 4.2 in this car, and then... What ends up happening is the dial-in is what that's called, your estimated time that you put into that text box for bracket racing. This person is going to leave first because they are slower. The whole point of bracket racing is to make cars that are not equal, equal. So, as you're going to see when I stage, uh -huh, too far. As you're going to see as I stage, He's going to leave first because he has a dial in of 14 seconds, meaning I am going to sit here for 10 seconds and just wonder about what I'm doing with my life and just wait. There we go. So 10 seconds and I have to run my race and hope I don't run faster than, well, there I go, faster than 4.2. <laughs> So anyway, obviously I went faster than 4.2. That caused what's called a breakout. I'm not going to use the AI for the example because these are just hard generated numbers for right now. But basically what ends up happening is if you break out, that means you ran faster than your dial-in, meaning you lost the race. If both players break out, there is some math logic behind it that we kind of have to figure out as a community. Is it a draw? Or does the person closest to their dial-in still win? 
I think different race types and tournaments and stuff like that in real life do it in different ways. I th can't think of many situations when they just call it a draw, especially in real life. But it doesn't matter. So, and then there's head-to-head -head racing, which is what you saw me do a couple minutes ago. So head-to-head -head racing is when you just run somebody in their car. Let's find somebody with the same car as me. There we go. So you just run somebody in your exact, basically run what you brung, is what people like to call it. You simply just send them a race, there's no dial in, there's no bracket time, there's no lag time, you both leave the green light at the same time and it's the first person to the end of the track. Very simple. I know I haven't even gotten into building your car up yet, give me a minute, I'll get there. <laughs> I'm going to run this race against my friend James real quick. And there we go. Woo, another 4.18. I'm having a good old time tonight. I'm going to have to run some races against some people. Anyway, that's a head-to-head -head race. He is going to then get the race sent to him as a incoming challenge. I'm actually going to send one to somebody that I know usually will run it nearly immediately. There we go. This guy usually runs his races nearly immediately as long as he's at his computer. Evans is a cool guy. We were sitting on Discord voice chat last week for like four hours. <laughs> it was uh, it was quite a long time. So that basically sends him a race that'll send to his incoming. If you want to see the outcome of a race, a player has 72 hours to run their race. And then if they don't run it, you get your money back or... If you pink slip, you get your pink slip back. As you, as you can see, after 72 hours, they just come back. And you get your money refunded. There you go. Perfect. So, I want to upgrade my car. Well, first of all, you need a car that you can upgrade. Let's select the Skyline, because I don't think I've bought much for it. The parts right now are the same for every car except premiums. For premiums, for example, are the F-Type, the Nitro Funny Car, the Top Fuel Dragster, the Stock Car, and the SRT4 Drag Car. Those are all premium vehicles. They used to be real money, except for the Mopar. We call this the Mopar. They all used to be real money. I believe they were $9 a piece. So, you know, microtransactions long before microtransactions were actually a thing. Uh, way ahead of the curve. <laughs> but right now, parts are kind of just here. And you can go in, you can customize your vehicle. So first of all, I want to be able to edit my gear ratios. I have to buy, You have to buy the Magic Gearbox. That unlocks the ratio editor in your garage. Excuse me. Oh my god. I'm dying. Um, if you want to be able to edit your ride height, you need to come in, you need to buy one of the sets of coilovers. I don't know if this is actually, actually in the game yet. I keep hiccuping because I'm talking for so long. I don't know if the functionality to raise and lower your car is in the game yet, but this is how you unlock, uh, ride height and suspension. From there, you can do your forced induction, supercharger, or turbo setup. You can do, um... Exhaust, obviously, you can do nitrous kits, 200, 50, or 100. There's your engine internals that are oil filter, throttle body, pistons, air filter, injectors. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can add on to your car in this game. It's really cool. From there, there is currently a bug in the game very early beta it'll be fixed i promise you go in and buy a part and install it and then go right back to your garage it's going to dyno without the part installed and you're not going to see it installed there is an easy way around that you can just go in you can buy a car and that reinitializes your account and then you can just go back to your garage select the car you're messing with and you can dyno it 
and you'll see the part is indeed installed. You can also just go in and uh, you can just relog if you want, but that's kind of the long way around it. And then the car that you bought, you don't even need to keep. Right now, we are not taking money off of a vehicle's value if you are selling it back to the game, as we call that. But there will probably be a used car lot eventually as well. But building your car, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go in. And, you know, I'm going to run my dyno. I can see that the part is installed. Force induction, vortex supercharger right here. You can simply, you can uninstall it very easily. If you miss it, just reinstall it. And you know, make sure everything's all hunky-dory. I was 517 before, so I don't, I wanted a stock car anyway. Give me one. Where's the stock car? There we go. I don't have one of those yet. We're going to go in. And as you can see, the part is reinstalled. That simple. It's a very easy game to play. It's a lot of fun. You can edit your ratios. There's a ton of places on Google still if you search the old game's name of NATO 1320 Challenge Ratios. You can find a starting point very easily. I plan on trying to make a what I call a ratio bank on the actual website for people if they want to come in and actually see the cars and get a starting point for ratios. That'll help people for different horsepowers. There's a lot you can do in this game. There's also the teams, which I didn't even go over very much. There's a... Uh, how did I get kicked off my team? Oh. I got kicked off my team. <laughs> Mod tools, you won't have that. But as you can see, there's a racers chat where everybody can chat. Um, there's a whole bunch of fun little stuff in here. So, you know, be excited. 1320 Challenge is back. It's 2022. I'm not sure... It feels if it feels like 2002. It, I don't know. I'm all confused. I'm all confizzled. But, oh, did he run it? Oh, he did. So, if you want to see the race result, it's right here, and you can see your winnings or losses. I won. I got lucky. So, anyway, guys, that's an in-depth look to 1320 Challenge. If you guys want to go play, uh, like I said, the download link is in the description down below. This entire video goes over the entire process of start to finish of how to play 1320 Challenge with us and beta test it. We will have a Discord dedicated to 1320 Challenge set up very soon. Um, we're just working out the kinks with the Dinobot and the sections. Discord didn't give us the forum option on the new Discord no matter what we did, so the Discord looks a little bare at the moment. But, like I said... Very easy to, to download and play and enjoy and play with us. As long as your computer is running Windows and as long as you can run a SWF Flash file, you can play this game with us. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the in-depth look to 1320 Challenge. I'm hoping to have some other content uh, of something else sometime soon but i'm just really excited about challenge leave me alone <laughs> talk to you guys later peace out